My parents had a maths tutor for me because they wanted to be amazing at maths. I was pretty good at numbers and I'd have this tutor and he'd tell me that, he goes, the reason that you're struggling with the next question is because you're always worried about what your parents think. And, and that really stayed in my head. I was just like, wow, so as long as I'm trapped by what my parents think, I can actually never find the answers to the real questions of life. Most of us just throw ourselves into the deep end and then try swim and figure it out. The problem is we all went to normal schools that try to put stuff in us rather than take stuff yeah. out of us. You know, you were told at school that you weren't very good and right. you weren't good at English and now you have a New York Times bestseller, right? right? right yeah. And it's like no one noticed that potential inside you. No one noticed that, oh, Lewis was really creative. And you're not the only person. There's so many people who feel like that. So the modern schooling system didn't extrapolate your self-actualization, your element, and just try to put maths, English, science inside. So the point is that you're trying to get to a, such a strong foundation that when you interact in the world, you're going with a sense of strength, fuel, energy to make a difference, rather than going into the world and then going, oh my God, where am I trying to figure it out? People were so far removed from their own understanding of themselves that they were either lost living a life they didn't want to, lost living up to someone else's expectations, or lost becoming someone to impress someone else. How many of you have a crazy dream or a crazy goal? I want you to write out in the comment section, what is your crazy dream? The dream that keeps you up at night is the real dream you should be chasing. But to chase that dream, to find that dream, to make that dream a reality, you need a strategy, right? A dream without a plan is just a wish. Tony Robbins said that, right? A dream without a plan is just a wish. You can't be what you can't see. If I never saw a monk, I would never have wanted to be a monk. If I never meet a billionaire, I wouldn't want to be one because I wouldn't know what that feels like. I don't know what it looks like. I don't know what it takes. What am I good at? What do I love? What does the world need? And how do I get paid for it? To me, those four help you unlock your passion. I often say to people, your passion is for you. Your purpose is for others. Your passion makes you happy. But when you use your passion to make a difference in someone else's life, that's a service, that's a purpose. My goal has never been financially or materially oriented. I see that stuff as the byproduct of doing what you love. I genuinely, genuinely believe that. It's always been that way around for me. My focus is to create entertainment that truly has educational value, but without us always knowing it. I think we all learn best when we don't know that we're learning. Hmm. If we're all pushed into a classroom and told we have a class, we're all not listening. Start at a place where you have self-awareness, self-actualization, you have figured out what works for you, what your strengths are. So I think it starts even at a physical level. Anyone who's a physical fitness or a health coach will know that different bodies need different food, different sleep, different fluids. Mm -hmm. We don't all need the same thing. Me and you with different body types can't do the same workout. Our bodies have different tolerances yeah. in different things. That's self-awareness at the physical level. Mm -hmm. We know our limits, we know what we can do, we know what we can't mm -hmm. do, we know what our challenges. On a mental level, what's self-awareness? Knowing what type of people I like to be with. Knowing who helps me grow and who drains me. Mm -hmm. That's mental self-awareness. I believe that the answers come from within and we're not asking the right questions. I feel we're always looking for the right answers, not the right questions. And the biggest companies that we respect today, the biggest organizations, all came from trying to answer a question. Mm. It all came from trying to solve a problem or a question that we were able to identify. Mm -hmm. So my work comes from a very simple study that I read that said the most successful people in the world choose education over entertainment and the most unsuccessful people in the world choose entertainment over education. I know people who graduated at 21 and didn't get a job till they were 27. I know people who graduated late at 25 and they found work immediately. I know people who never went to university but found what they love at 18. 
I know people who found a job straight out of college, making decent money, but hate what they do. I know people who took gap years and found their purpose. I know people who were so sure about what they were going to do at 16 and changed their mind at 26. I know people who have children but are single. And I know people who are married but have had to wait eight to 10 years to have children. I know people in relationships who love someone else. I know people who love each other but aren't together. So my point is, everything in life happens according to our time, our clock. You may look at some of your friends and think that they're ahead of you, or maybe some of them you feel are behind, but everything happens at their own pace. They have their own time and clock, and so do you. Be patient. At age 25, Mark Cuban was a bartender in Dallas. It took till 32 for J.K. Rowling to be published for Harry Potter after being rejected by 12 publishers. Ortega launched Zara when he was 39. Jack Ma started Alibaba when he was 35. Morgan Freeman got his big break at 52. Steve Carell only got his break after 40 years old. Virgin was started by Richard Branson at 34. Getting your degree after 25 is still an achievement. Not being married at 30 but still happy is beautiful. Starting a family after 35 is still possible. And buying a house after 40 is still great. Don't let anyone rush you with their timelines. Because as Einstein said, not everything that counts can be counted. And not everything that's counted truly counts. And this is the most important thing. I want you to be able to create meaningful, purposeful, fulfilling lives for yourselves and learn how to use that to make an impact and a difference in the lives of others. That will be true success.